Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. By a surprising amount of popular demand, today, primary extraction. Now, when you fire a round of ammunition, the brass of the cartridge case expands, grips the walls of the chamber, and then in principle at least, shrinks back down. Now, in the case of if, say, the brass splits longitudinally, or it's not particularly springy, or the chamber's really dirty, or your brass is in fact lacquered steel, as any uh, Mosin owner would know, it tends to stay stuck. And the problem is that just by pulling back, you can't actually exert that much force to shake it loose. So what's built into most rifles is a bit of mechanical advantage, just so that as you finish turning the bolt, it pulls the, the empty case away from the chamber walls, just a couple of millimeters, just to shake it loose, and then you can just whack it back as normal. Now, there are several ways that this has been uh, done in the past, and I have an example in front of me of no primary extraction, because it doesn't need it, because it's a semi-auto, uh, a camming-based system based on the bolt handle hitting a, a little cam surface, and two examples of um, camming lug action. And uh, when I bring the camera back, I will look at uh, those in detail and explain how, how they work. This is the most common system in bolt action rifles. Um, in this one, this is a Mauser 98K, it's the bolt handle acting on a cam surface there. Some of them on a Mosin, for instance, it's the safety lug acting on a cam surface up there. Uh, Mass 36, basically that's the normal thing. Um, Semi-autos generally don't need it. There are some that do have it, but in fact they don't need it because you're under, the, your, your op rod has got a lot of momentum from, uh, from, from, from the gas pressure acting in the gas cylinder, so that just whacks it out. And your primary extraction there is just basically it gets whacked. And that's normally enough, but uh, the Norinco ammo that I've uh, shot in some videos, uh, in this sometimes that doesn't extract very well, and you need to uh, persuade it a little to come back out. So um, what I'm gonna do is uh, bring the camera around. We're going to have a look at how it works. And then what I've also got here is some empty cases for the three for the three bolt actions, we're going to, using a pair of pliers, generate some hard extractions and see how the different systems perform. Not this one, obviously, because uh, no, life is, life is too short to have to mortar that in my living room. So uh, anyway. Right, so first up, the M1, with a nice example of no mechanical primary extraction going on. Now, uh, I was actually having a little argument with the chap earlier as to whether his 1886 wedge locking straight pull man licker had any primary extraction or not. He says, no, 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 it doesn't have any. I said, well, look at the video, and I'll post the video right now. Um, I think you've got a couple of millimeters there. And he says, no, 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 but uh, I will put the video up. I will leave it for you to decide whether there's any mechanical uh, advantage going on there or not. But uh, if we zoom in here on the action. Now, as the operating rod comes back, the bolt rotates and it doesn't start to come back at all until that point where it's fully unlocked. So there's actually no mechanical advantage whatsoever that, that pulls a, a case, unseats a case from the chamber. And as I said, it doesn't need it because this is coming back at quite some velocity and your primary extraction is just the fact that the, uh, the bolt roller there hits the end of the cam track in there and boff, out it comes. So uh, there you go, that is no primary extraction. So now onto the most common type of primary extraction as exemplified by this uh, Car 98K here. Now what we've got here, if I grab my pokey fondue fork of doom, you've got this surface on the bolt handle, comes into contact with this angled cam surface on the receiver. Now on a Mosin, it's the front of the, uh, uh, the big third lug and there's a curved surface on here. Uh, Labelle is similar, uh, Mass 36 is back here. There's all sorts of variations on it. So the first part of the unlocking movement just rotates the, uh, the locking lugs out of engagement. And due to the way these are machined, the locking shoulders are absolutely flat and uh, you can't do anything with that rotation. And then once it hits the cam track there, 
it pulls the bolt back a little bit. And just to show you quite how much it pulls it back, I shall zoom in. So if we zoom right in here now, uh, I've marked with pen where the back of the receiver comes to on the bolt. Uh, drawn the line all the way around so you can see just quite how far that pulls it. And you can see that when the bolt is unlocked, we've got quite a lot there. We've got, well, it's got to be about six millimeters or so, seven millimeters. We've got quite a lot of uh, mechanical advantage that of movement, bringing the bolt back to carry out primary extraction and then ching, out it comes. Now the slight problem with this type of system is that you've actually not got much um, rotation of the bolt handle to work with and it's pulling it back quite a long way. So when you do get a hard extraction on one of these, you get a really hard extraction and we'll see quite how hard that is in a minute when I play with some empty cases. Right, moving on now to the number four, what we have here is the lugs here, or well specifically this lug, runs in a curved track. And I shall just try and get the camera in here with the available light. So that there is the locking recess for the small lug. And as you can see, it's cut on a curve. And what happens is that when you turn the bolt, the lug disengages relatively quickly because it's not very wide on an angular basis and then runs up that curved track. So what happens there is if we watch the position of the bolt head there with respect to the rear of the receiver, you can see as we turn it, it starts moving backwards already quite quickly. So as, just, as I lift, you can see how much I'm lifting it by watching the rib here. And as I said, just watch, watch that point there, watch that small gap between the uh, rear face of the receiver and the bolt head. So that pulls from, from, from that position, it starts to pull back and that's fully unlocked. So that's pulled back. It's a bit less, that's about what, three, four millimeters. And then chunk, out it comes. Now the K31 works on a similar but slightly different principle. In fact, the, uh, the bolt lugs, the locking lugs are cut at an angle. So in fact, their locking shoulders are not perpendicular to the bore. So they're running in a helical track, basically, and their locking surfaces are helical rather than, uh, rather than perpendicular. And what this means is when you withdraw the bolt, it rotates and comes back at the same time and if you look at the, uh, uh, the gas shield there, let's get in the middle of frame. If you look at the gas shield there, as I pull back the bolt handle, it moves back. Again, it's gonna be about three millimeters, two, three, four millimeters before the bolt is unlocked. And that is what provides your primary extraction. And uh, yeah, absolutely essential on a straight pull. Now, because this rifle has uh, helical locking surfaces, there's actually some fairly complicated cuts on uh, the back of this. So um, yeah, it's not a simple setup in there. Uh, the Mauser setup is easier, much, much easier to machine than this. Right, so uh, what we're gonna do now is generate some hard extractions by monging up a case and forcing it into the chamber so that it, uh, so that it sits in pretty hard. So we've got to tickle this under the extractor here because this extractor does not have a usable bevel on it. So if you'll excuse me, this is a three hand job and I'm only provided with two. Okay. So there we go, fire it off. And as you can see, it's kind of hard. Kind of a hard, ah, oh, there we go. Once it, once it takes, it's fine. It's just uh, getting it there. And luckily that there's a little bit of lubricant in this, uh, in this chamber, but let's do that again. Let's squeeze that up. Drop it in. Defeat the idiot stop. In it goes. There we go. So again, 
up to there is fine because that's fine because we're not pulling back on it. But then to get it that last bit of the way needs a bit of a oonk. And I feel sorry for the poor saps that had to run these with lacquered steel cases in the Second World War. Right, moving on to the number four now. Same exercise, I have an HXP, so Greek uh, case, 1983. A mil-spec case, same exercise. Squish it up. Now in this case, what I'm gonna do, just to show you the difference, because um, I can fully chamber this and then just get the extractor to hook over it and then just try and pull it out straight. So I'm just gonna hammer this in with my pliers. So that's all the way in. And then if I just push forward like that, I've engaged the extractor and I cannot, oh, I can just, but with difficulty, extract it. Let's just do that again. All the way in. Whee! Right, extractor's clipped over. Ah. Takes a lot of effort. So uh, let's do it properly now. Make sure that the case is nice and out of round on the shoulder, particularly. See, there we go. The other thing that's worth noting with the Lienfield system is because of that curved cam track I showed you earlier in there, you can force in quite a deformed case and plus these chambers are deliberately generous so that they'll work when they're full of cack. Um, so by comparison, this is like, that did not feel hard at all. I mean, just to show you how out of round this is, hopefully that'll be in focus really mash this up, he says, there we go. So you just look at the amount of force that needed to go in to putting that in, and yeah, I can just extract it like that. This is super, super powerful. As you can see from exactly what point you're getting leverage. Let's just prepare the case again. So you're already getting leverage, rearwards leverage from there, that point. So that's the only free movement you've got. From there, you've got some degree of leverage all the way back. And then it's free from the chamber. Okay, that was a little harder, but just to show you how deformed that case is. In fact, it's probably easiest if I move the camera and zoom right in. that case is massively deformed. So aside from a split on firing, I'm not sure how I could make that uh, any harder to remove. I mean, this is a super powerful system. Right, K31, same exercise. Let's deform this case up a bit. Um, this might need a cleaning rod at the end. I'm not quite sure how this is gonna go. So let's insert it in. Right, that's already stiff. That's already nowhere near in and it's stiff, but I'm gonna make it go. And I've got the uh, cocking piece in the intermediate position so I can exert as much force as I, as I can. In you go, in you go. Right, so we've got it in, we've got it locked, far off the action, and then see, easy. Oh, that's brilliant. And this is a dry, I, I have this morning shot this gun in competition and have not cleaned it, not oiled it. So we have a dry chamber, dry, piece of brass that was fired in this rifle. Again, I just smushed it massively out of round. Again, it's not going in very easily. If I push it in so forward enough that it doesn't actually lock, so it doesn't actually um, fully conform to the chamber, and then, oh, I basically can't get it out. So lock it fully get the full whack of it, there you go. Again, that is massively powerful primary extraction and uh, during the Second World War, the Swiss did end up having to make some lacquered steel cases. Um, I've got some in my collection and uh, I'm sure that would have been quite necessary with, uh, with the steel. I've not fired any of the steel. The primers are probably dead because they're relatively early um, non-corrosive primers, but uh, 
yeah, there you go. Primary extraction in a nutshell. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Please consider supporting us on Patreon if you haven't done so already. We've got some uh, pretty ammunition hungry content coming up in the future and uh, any support you can give us is gratefully received. Bye.